Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Podcast, episode 407 for Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to or welcome back to Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, really for everyone, because what we do is we talk about how we apply our business brain thinking to all aspects of life, including our businesses. Sponsors for this episode include shopify.com slash SBS. That's where you can go to get your 14 day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. We'll talk more in depth about that and a little something more a little later in the episode here for now here using my business brain in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in Lafayette, California, I'm using my business brain as well. This is Shannon Jean. <laughs> and uh, my, my, the, the, the Christian who takes care of our, our yard needs is using his business brain and his leaf blower outside right now. So if you uh, hear that, yes. that's, uh, you know, I've tried to tune it out with the thing. Yeah. I am mostly soundproofed in the studio, but it's there. So, you know, whatever. It's fine. Where, where I live, there is not a day goes by that you don't hear a blower. Uh, and we're pretty spread out, you know, sure. I've got like an acre and a half and I don't really see any neighbors, but you certainly hear it. So blowers are, <laughs> I'm, I'm very used to that. So if I well, hear it, this is you know. probably the last blower episode of the season for us here. Cause mm. it's, it's just, you know, we have this season where you clear out all the leaves and then, and then the, the winter happens and, and then, you know, yeah. the leaves come down and, uh, and that little the leaves have already here. come down. Yeah. It's, it's different. Yeah. What it else is different more. is that you folks Sent in a lot of feedback after last, last week's episode. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Feedback at businessbrain.show uh, is where all of this came in. Listener Jeff starts us off. He says, uh, I just listened to your episode on wanting feedback as to what's working and not working. I don't typically engage in this fashion, but I thought, well, that's an honest question. And I've listened to about uh, 200 of your episodes. And if I'm being honest, I'm kind of on the cusp. Because I think a lot of your shows, for me, are overly simplistic and vague, but yet you run very specific businesses. So, for example, the one where you talked about what you had to do when the pandemic hit, talking to your employees, laying out the reality, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're not going to do, that was very specific, very detailed, and extremely helpful. This is great, Jeff. Thank you. for th This is great. He goes on, but uh, I just wanted to stop here and say, that, like, I, I realize that this is constructive criticism. Thank this is what we want. Like that's just, this what, is, you, just what we need. Awesome. Yeah, when, when you, it makes the show better. It makes the show better. Exactly. Uh, and it, to, to that end, Jeff continues, but then you sold a business and most of what you talked about was extremely vague. Like, Hey, I got this buyer. We did our due diligence and you know, now I'm not a part of it anymore. And how I feel about that, which is great. But the reality is how did you find that buyer? What were the steps you actually went through? Do you have a PDF of the bullet points of the things that you got uh, that you should look out for? You know what I'm looking for in a buyer. These are the red flags that had me concerned, but ultimately were OK. You know, those kinds of just really pragmatic things is what Jeff, he says, would be personally looking for. OK, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to put a pin in that only because this is a great question. I want to answer it. We have a lot to get through in this episode. I think that is worthy of its own episode, and I, I don't want to miss out on all the other feedback that came in. So we're, we're going to do that. The plan is that we're going to do that next week because you and I have both been through it very differently, yep. but also together. Uh, so, yeah, we've, we've got a lot to talk about there. Uh, continuing on, though, Jeff says, like right now, I would be looking for shows that say something like, hey, the economy's tanking. Inflation is killing me. Supply chain is a problem, if it is, for your business. Some businesses are more impacted by that than others. He says, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I, he's like, you know, I want to hear what are you doing? What aren't you doing? What should you be doing? That's what I want to know. Okay, we'll talk about that. He says, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's exactly the kind of feedback you folks were looking for. It is, Jeff. But at least that's what he says he takes away from the show. He says, I do appreciate your show and your honest answer and back and forth of off the cuff uh, without censoring too much. I think it's super helpful. All right. So let's have this conversation. Let's answer Jeff's question yeah. about the economy. Uh, 
uh, because I, uh, and I and I, I have lots of thoughts about this, uh, and I'm probably going to be more honest, especially about the one business I never talk about uh, here than I've ever been on the show, because it makes sense. Uh, the economy is it, tanking, right? Uh, there are a variety of reasons Agreed. for it. Yep. And they are impacting my businesses negatively, hurting my businesses in, in measurable Same. ways. What's <laughs> yes. that? Yeah. Okay. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yes. With Backbeat Media, we're probably going to end Q4 down about 20% over Q4 for the past two years. But that said, the past two years were anomalies in the other direction, right? Everybody was trapped at home with nothing else right. to do other than spend money online and so we in the podcast business, which is what, you know, Backbeat Media does, we, we, we have these shows that we produce, we, we, but mostly, we're, well, I have shows that I produce. Backbeat technically doesn't produce any shows. We keep that part separate. Uh, but, you know, we, we manage sponsorships for lots of shows and some of those are mine, but, you know, lots more that, that are not. Uh, so we were in the perfect position to capitalize on the pandemic lockdowns. And I, 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 for a long time, I hesitated from saying anything, but financially, the pandemic lockdowns were spectacular for our businesses. Spectacular. It was amazing. I I would say many, many companies would have a similar experience. And now they're coming down off the high. Mm -hmm. uh, That's exactly it. Right. Folks are leaving their homes more. Money's being spread out. And on top of that, so, so there's, there is that (laughs) very much that, but on top of that, the podcast industry uh, is becoming more and more obsessed with tracking listeners. And that's not something we've ever been comfortable doing is letting people track all of you. Uh, so we've been turning down more and more business because we don't let advertisers track our listeners. Lazy marketers are the bane of my existence. They've always been the bane of my existence. It's I think it's just part of part and parcel of like having a conscience and, and wanting to run a, a decent business here. And, and yeah, I'm probably calling out some of my friends and competitors, but what the hell? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's true. So, you know, so we're addressing that. So that's the, like, those two things are, are negatively impacting backbeat, right? Business is still okay. Um, part of the reason we get vague sometimes is because of confidentiality. Another part of the reason that we get vague sometimes is because our our teammates and partners listen to this show. And so it like and I, I would I would also say sometimes I get vague because I just don't know. Mm. And and I will say like my experience is similar to yours. Uh several businesses are our vacation rental business, you know, certain properties are way down versus the you know last year yeah uh, but other ones some of the higher end properties are are just killing it and way up and doing well so I, I i'm trying to figure out why are you know certain areas slow why are certain areas not and and i i really can't put my finger on it and then with my handbag you know experiment business that i'm still running i i lost a, a major supplier this year so our the product mix is different and I'm. I also got heavily involved in a, a a political school board campaign, so I kind of took my eye off the ball a little bit. So that business is down dramatically, you know, maybe thirty thirty five percent. But I'm not sure. Is it all because of the economy, or is it because my product mix changed, or because I didn't spend as much time on the business in the last you know quarter? Yeah. So so sometimes that vagueness is just I don't know. So I I I, I can talk. And, you know, BS my way through it, but I don't think that serves <laughs> anybody any good yeah, either, right? Right. And, and, and I mean, the same is true with, with Backbeat. There, there might be other reasons that, that things are down a little bit. Although I sure. do know that it, in general, also, like, the, in general, the podcast industry is down a little bit right now. Few people are willing to talk about it. Veritone came out and said that, you know, they were down uh, year over year, which may, it makes sense. I, you know, they, well, they're a public publicly traded company, so they kind of have to be a little more forthcoming with that information. Sure. The private companies like ours don't generally share bad news when they, you know, unless, unless they have yeah. to, but I, I, I appreciate Jeff calling us out now to answer his question. What are we doing to address it? Well, with backbeat, we're addressing it by, by growing wide. And I'll say that it sounds like you've, essentially done the same thing, Shannon, in that 
you are you are hedging your bets, if you will, across multiple like you don't have just one rental property. You have right. multiples. Right. And so yep. we are taking some of the you know surplus that we have earned over the last couple of years and allowing that to help us grow wide. Now, with Backbeat, growing wide means adding more shows uh, doing a little, doing a lot more business development time, n- not just in reaching out to shows, but reaching out to more sponsors and and being a little more creative. Uh, quite candidly, the last couple of years, we got to be order takers, which was amazing, yeah. right? You know, but right. we had set, so well. our, yeah, we had set ourselves up for that, but that has now changed. We can't be order takers, and and so we're devoting even more of our time into our customer service aspect of our business spending time on zoom calls or in person or whatever with our, you know, our sponsors, our key sponsors, even some of what I would call our not key sponsors, the, the ones that are in growth mode, like development mode and just letting them know, here's who we are. We're here. Our job is to make your job easier. We see you as partners, not as people we sell to like all of this stuff, but really I, I, I gloss over it. Or I mention it quickly, but th- like all each of those things I just said, is super important to us because it's true about how we perceive our business. But the idea is making sure our partners and our customers perceive our business the same way that we do. And that means spending some time with them and, and putting the proof in the pudding, if you will. So that's, yeah, that's backbeat. Um, the other business that my partners have asked me not to name, uh, that I rarely, rarely talk about, but I, I will share specifically more specifically what it is. It's an engine that helps people legitimately earn cryptocurrency. Now, I will say, don't worry about us. Uh, we, don't, <laughs> we don't hold any crypto. We are not in business with FTX. Uh, we just buy, essentially, when, when some we, people have ways of earning, and then when they want to cash out, we buy crypto and send it to them is, is how that works. So like, we're, we're fairly insulated from that. And, and I will say that was a decision that, was made before my partners even brought me into this business. And I thank them for it all the time because it's like being pegged to the U S dollar instead of being pegged to the value of Bitcoin is, is amazing. However, uh, you know, that business too benefited greatly, even more so than backbeat from folks being trapped at home during COVID lockdowns at the same time, uh, you know, sort of the perfect storm, the, uh, the, the the interest in the value of all crypto, Bitcoin specifically, but all crypto was was at a feverish peak during uh, during the covid lockdown. So combine those two yeah. things together. And I mean, we had like gangbuster years. It was amazing. Right. That that edge has been taken off for two reasons, at least two reasons. To your point, Shannon, there might be others I don't know about. You know, there, there's. There's it's likely the business is being mismanaged because, you know, I'm in charge. No, it's, uh, but, you know, like <laughs> there are mistakes that we make that we realize after the fact. Right. And so I'm I'm aware that that might be part that I'm that, that there are things I might not be aware of. Uh, but, you know, people are no longer locked down uh, and crypto is not as sexy as it was, you know, last year or two years ago. So those two things uh very much have have negatively impacted that business. Now, it's still very profitable. And the engine of that business is super solid. In fact, the 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 crypto interest and lockdowns proved that the engine is super solid because we just suddenly saw all kinds of, of new users. And when I say the engine, I mean, yes, the software that runs the site for sure, but also all of our relationships with partners that that allow us these opportunities to to earn you know we work with various different partners that have different things they need we bring the users in we put them all together we're really in the fraud prevention business to make sure that the users that come in are real and that we're handing to our partners are real and they don't hate us for it and that that's that's how that business works Uh, but also you know things are down a little bit and so we are getting less users but we know that we haven't tapped out on the supply side so all we need to do is bring in more users and there's more money on the other side of it, as long as we can bring them in yeah. economically. So two, in that business, we're also going wide. We are increasing the ways people can find us online. 
and and those specific ways are more uh, apps in the app stores so that when people are searching for how to do specific things online, instead of just finding one app, they will find multiples that allow them to do, you know, instead of one app that does everything, we segment it out. We've, we've seen our, our competitors have success with this. So it's like, okay, we should do that and go wide. We've also partnered with a, a firm called The Hoth uh, to do some SEO work for us to really help us sort of go wider there. And, and so for our businesses, to answer your question, Jeff, going wide is what we're doing. Now, it, it means different things for your business than it does for mine. In fact, it means different things for each of my businesses that I just talked about. But that's what we're doing is, is spreading wider so that we have a more stable base and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, so hopefully that's a more specific answer. That's the most specific I've ever been on this show, <laughs> but it's a, I yeah. like, I want to be more specific for all of you. I, I get it, Jeff, you make, you, you, you make a fantastic point. So I, I'm sure yeah, you and have and some I more think, to add to that. I just talked for a long time, Shannon. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's good. Um, and I appreciate that. The, to me, there's two, two ends of the spectrum and, you know, going wide and but all these things that you're talking about too are opportunities and, you know, hardship can make your company much stronger and create all kinds of opportunities. Uh, excuse me. And I think that there on the spectrum for my businesses, I'm thinking on two, two ends of it. One is value. Okay. How do I sell products and offer what, people want but at a maybe at a better value and so sure. like on that you know handbag business i'm like well we're gonna go the vintage route and and go into other uh channels and vertical markets that i've never been in before but people that can get things uh, that they otherwise couldn't afford that's great and that and that's that's working out pretty well but on the flip side on the vacation rental business it seems like the luxury properties are doing better and they're stronger and uh where the the mid to kind of lower end standard properties those have slowed down the most and our speculation is that well on the big luxury house uh and, and places people are coming together it's multiple families because they're larger so it's at less impact on their pocketbook perhaps and they want to get together with people and so you know, it's not just one thing or another, and it's continually experimenting. Is there a value if you're in product business? Is there some sort of value proposition? You know, can you bundle things together? Can mm. you talk about, we know times are tough, so we're doing this for you, for our customers and adding value and, you know, trying to try to get closer to your customers so they can appreciate that. But don't ignore if there's a luxury uh base of your customers that are just like, Hey, we're not going to be impacted by this, you know, uh, uh, economic slowdown. So we want X and we want to distinguish ourselves by having X and show it off and, you know, that kind of thing. So I think you need to look at it both ways, but all of it comes down to opportunities. If, if you think about it and, and we've got a, a show in the works for a few weeks from now that we're going to talk about um, kind of embracing the, the oncoming recession to uh, find opportunities. I'm looking forward to uh, talking about those things. Oh man, another notification. Wait, I like that notification. That's actually one of the ones I'd like to leave on because that's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with our sponsor, Shopify, and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create an online store in your vibe, you discover new customers, and grow the following that keeps those customers coming back. Because Shopify has all the sales channels sorted, so your business keeps growing from an in-person point of sale to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms. And thanks to 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sales with Shopify. <laughs> 
And you will too, Shannon and I. We've done it. We've heard that sound because we've used Shopify with other businesses we've had. It's fantastic. They just make it so easy. When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go on, try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash SBS to start selling online today. That's shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Hey, you know, as business brainiacs, <laughs> I love that term, entrepreneurship has its ups and downs. It's how we deal with those obstacles that makes the difference between success and failure. And we've found a new podcast that helps you navigate that path. It's called Entrepreneur's Enigma. It's hosted by former journalist Seth Goldstein. Every week, Seth interviews entrepreneurs from all walks of life about their journeys through entrepreneurship, the ups, the downs, and how to deal with them. Entrepreneur's Enigma episodes drop every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Check out entrepreneursenigma.com or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for doing this swap with us, Seth. All right. I, I, uh, I got to say, I really, I mean, at first, I really love the noise of that, that leaf blower outside. But beyond that, <laughs> second only yeah. to that, uh, I love, I really love helping people. I, like, I've built my career to help people do different things. And, and anytime I've lost focus of that, I lose money. When I gain focus, when I regain focus on that, that's when I'm successful because I'm helping other people be successful. And I yeah. love doing this show focusing on all of you. And, and, and quite frankly, the more, the less the show is about you and me, Shannon, and the more the show is about everyone Correct. else, the yeah. better off, the better I feel. And I think correct me if I'm wrong, the better the show is. Jim uh, sends in the next question to feedback at businessbrain.show. He says, uh, <laughs> here's your feedback loop from a single listener. I love your show. I doubt I'll ever email you again, but <laughs> you get this one for all your effort on Business Brain 406, the last episode. Here's my thinking. You're doing great for folks like me. My business is fledgling. I feel swamped. I don't have time to send you an email because I'm a guilt-ridden workaholic. I wonder how many of your listeners are also busy trying to figure out how to make their one, two, five, even 10-year-old business work and go to the next level, learning from you but not giving you feedback. You'll never know, I guess. Sorry. Not very helpful am I. <laughs> Maybe more helpful. I love your tangents. The show's about 15 minutes longer than I have time to listen to most of the time. But on days that I can let my mind stick with you for a full show, I'm happy when I do it. I find the relevancy mixed for my type of business. I run a creamery on a farm. It's my parents' farm. I learned how to meet food regulations in construction, equipment, process, paperwork, and bottle milk, chocolate milk, kefir, I don't even know what that is, make curds, cheddar, camembert, cottage cheese, camembert, sorry. Uh, some of the products are a terrible business proposition the way I'm doing them, but I'm stubborn. Others keep the business going. I'm terrible at marketing. Great at systems design. When I listen to you, it's mostly the way you think that I'm learning from, mm -hmm. not necessarily the specifics. I'm tr it. Yeah, I'm trying to understand my blind spots and take away all kinds of random learning depending on whatever my deficit happens to be. I find you sound far better at business than myself, so I don't have much to offer. I'm running one business or two, if you count the farm that I will soon be responsible for, while you guys talk about running multiple businesses. How many of your listeners are running one business for life? How many are rolling out startups and selling them? Anyway, your time is up for my feedback. Thanks, says Jim. Keep up the great show. Thanks for your candid talk and your tenacity. Well, bullheaded persistence is the key to uh, my success, I say. I guess, I guess I have two keys to my success. Be bullheadedly persistent about helping other people. So maybe I've learned a thing here today. But yeah, you're you're right, Jim. Um, the my thought in doing this is that even if the specific doesn't apply to you, I'm always looking for ways of trying to 
trying to sort of teach the the meta lesson. And and maybe that's why, you know, listener Jeff says we aren't specific enough. So we can be more specific, but still keeping in mind that. You got to go uh, back and forth. That I meta think. lesson. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah, important. I, I think yeah. I think it's a mix because there are some overarching um, techniques and systems that that are important to absorb and to continually talk about so yeah. you can experiment with them while offering specific examples in our from our business life and maybe even our personal life is um is also very you know uh, very important yes uh, yeah That's you awesome. you talk about bullheaded per- persistence uh, and i love that and you know for me I think it's also good to recognize, like my thing is completely different is, and I always talk about story yeah. and my driving force in, in my business life has been thinking about what story do I want to tell about my life and when am I going to tell it now? Okay. You know, after I've done it for 25, 30 years or when I was younger and I was worried about being perceived as a flake because I was trying all this different stuff and I, and I, I was just bound and determined that I was going to be successful, but the story has dragged me along and I just tell it backwards, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How I want, to, how I want the story to be is what I'm working towards. And when I share that technique with people, sometimes, you know, I, I get, a, I just did some consulting for, you know, a friend's uh, family business and they kind of looked at me funny and I just said, well, that's what works for me. And I just, what story do I want to tell? So whatever it is that you can find to turn the gears in your head that is going to force you to to do these things. Because I, I sound maybe like a highly motivated, super productivity, you know, type of person, but I'm actually not. But I cannot tell a story that doesn't have part of that in it. So uh, I make myself do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm, I, I'm, I, that makes sense. You, you're telling the story to hack your brain Correct. so that you convince yourself to, on the outside, look like a super productive person that never procrastinates yeah. a damn thing. Yeah. And when I talk about it, I, I want to tell that story to other people. I want them to get that impression that, wow, this is cool. And, you know, uh, and, and maybe it sounds simple when you're or like, oh, it must, it, you just have that skill. No, no, no. I, I don't have a lot of uh, skills other than some of that bullheaded persistence and overarching optimism that has kept me going because uh, I, I just can't fathom any other choice. And, and talking, we talk about our mistakes and our failures here a lot, right? But if you listen to us, you'll, you'll get the the spin on that yes. is we talk about it as tuition and how we turned it. And, you know, I'm making mistakes today that I probably are too raw to talk about on the show, but a year from now I'll be able to go back and say, wow, I really screwed up. I should have sold this company off sooner or whatever, you know, uh, different things. So um, finding that whatever that thing is that you can, you know, that, or that can squeeze you to mo- to motivate you is really important. No, I, 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 I and, and I'm definitely projecting here. So in fact, I won't say that this is what you're doing. I'll say that this is how I interpret what you're doing and apply it to my life. I am someone who is prone to procrastination. However, oh, me too. Yeah. Well, okay. So I can tell this about you, but, but I can also <laughs> s- tell it about me. Maybe this is why we get along so well is I don't want to be seen as the person who is the procrastinator. And so I will, I will, I will do things and, and be productive so that I am not seen as a procrastinator by me or anyone else. Right. But it's, it's very much a, a proactively reactive thing to do. It's like, Oh, I wait, 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 if I don't get this done, crap, I'm going to be a procrastinator. I got, no, 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 no. (laughs) I got to be the productive guy. I need to be the one. And a lot of that is fueled by me being petrified of having to work for someone else again. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That like, <laughs> couldn't do y- y- yeah. You know, when uh, in the, in, in music circles, the general answer to a question and this, this answer will come from, well, anyone experienced, but it, it doesn't mean pro musicians, although it definitely includes almost every pro musician, like, top level A-list musician I've ever talked to. And I haven't talked to too many of them, but I've talked to enough of them. But it's also anybody who is 
committed to playing music as their primary career, right? You know, I I have done it as my primary career. I've also done other things as my primary career. Uh, but when you ask people, well, what do I need to know about being a full-time musician? And I think this applies to what do I need to know about being a full-time entrepreneur of any kind is the answer I get from, from all the pros is – if you can imagine yourself doing something else, do that. But if you can't, then you need to be a musician. And I would say the exact same thing about being an entrepreneur. If you can imagine yourself leading your life and being happy, working for someone else and having them take that level of responsibility, you know, for whatever the business is and all of that. If you can do that, do that. But if you can't, then... Well, join the club. We've got jackets. You know, we're majorly yeah, like flawed it. people uh, yeah. that that are that are just driven. And I I have worked for other people, so I know what that's like. And I'm sure most musicians, uh, you know, before they they become pro musicians, they've done other things, and so they can imagine what that's like too because they've done it. I and I've always been the people that I've worked for have loved having me work for them, but it always drove me crazy to not be in charge of making the obvious decisions that you know to avoid the red tape. Yeah. I mean, I worked at bank, I worked at Citibank for a while, I worked at uh, GE Capital, which is essentially a bank, um, sort of. But you know, big companies, and it was like, God, why does it take so freaking long to get anything done? Like the uh, the answer is obvious, guys. And they would, they would, you know, sit me down and be like, dude, you got to chill for a little bit. You know, like, uh, you know, you, you, your ideas are right, but that's not how things work here. It's okay, you know, but just that's not how things work. I'm like, why the frick don't they work that way? Like, just, if we all know this is how it should work, why doesn't it work that way? Drove me crazy. So that, but that helped convince me that I needed to be on my own. And any time the businesses have been, you know, I've, I've talked about 2017 was a, a rough year financially for, for our businesses, I had taken my eye off the ball for a while. And when I say a while, I mean, you know, a five to eight year period where we were raising our kids and I loved the flexibility that I gave myself to do that and be, you know, at all their concerts and dance recitals and hockey games and like it was friggin' amazing. And I would do it exactly the same way, but it cost me, you know, business sort of slowly declined. And we got to a point where we had like, you know, a month's worth of payroll left in, in, in one of the businesses. And it was like, crap. Okay. I got to, uh, uh, it's time to put my eye on the ball again. Got it. Got to do it. Yeah. And I had to make some really tough decisions. We restaffed things in, in that we, we let some people go. We rejiggered the way the staffing worked, but I had to make it cash flow positive again. I had to, you know, dig in and I couldn't just let other people do stuff. I had to get in and do stuff and fix some things that I had sort of let go unfixed and all of that. And it, it worked out spectacularly well. It's like amazing. The business is healthier today than it's ever been. But there was that, that moment. And in that moment, you know, I had to sort of face the reality of, well, this might not work. Like this business might die. And if it yeah, does, you know, do I want to let it die? And, uh, and, and then go work for somebody else? Or would I be willing to invest more of, you know, my personal capital, which, of course, some of it came from the profits of the business over the years? You know, would I be willing to invest something in that to to keep it alive? And how much would I be willing to invest to keep it alive? Thankfully, it never got to that point. I didn't have to put any more money in, although I stopped taking a paycheck for a little while. So it might be argued that that, you know, I mean, I, I made that financial yeah, investment in there. Done that. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's like these. are So here here you go. Here's some specific, raw, honest stuff. And I'm glad to be I'm happy to be sharing it. I mean, sort of I, I'm not happy that I lived through it, uh, but I am because it taught me that I could do it. But it was that very, very strong desire to not have to go get a job with someone else that fueled me through that process. And the difficult, like I hate letting people go, but it was like, well, I got it. I mean, here's what it is. Here's what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to well, do this. And, and, and I, you know, I didn't want to have to reinvest my time in the business and basically take on yet another full-time job to do that. But, but it was like, well, 
I'm going to take on a full-time job with somebody else if I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to let that happen. So it's that right. that fuel of of knowing that I don't want to do X. Like, I don't want to be a procrastinator, so I seem like a productive person. I don't want to work for somebody else, so I figure out how to make the business survive. Those things are what fuel me. And, and we're all different, but... Look at what you don't want and and let that be your fuel. Um, yeah, that's yeah. good. I like that. And, you know, we we mentioned this a, a gazillion times on the show. Don't make fear based decisions. But sometimes I think that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fear, because it's such a motivator um, for so many, for all, for everyone, that it can be a powerful um, deterrent that you think about, oh, I don't want this to happen. I'm, I'm afraid of, you know, uh, being beholden to someone else and, and working and, and stuff, uh, working for them. But, um, you know, it, finding that motivator, whether it's being, being afraid of something else happening or, oh, you know, like in my case, I want to be able to tell the story and sound yeah. like I at least have some of my act together um, and, <laughs> Yeah, the the no. way it works now, I can you know it, it does work. It, it it has worked for me. But it, it's um, because you you desired to tell this story as opposed to the other story, and you desired yes. the the difference in that desire was so was strong enough. I don't want to say it was so strong, but it was strong enough that it drove you to stay on this path, and that's I think the key. We have a yep. ton more of your questions to answer. Thank you. We do. We are going to answer them, but. To uh, Jim's point, this episode's probably gone on 15 minutes too long for Jim. And so we will do this next week. Folks, though, the, we're, rec we're recording this the week of Thanksgiving. Thank you uh, for all of your feedback. Th this I couldn't have asked for anything more. I know we asked for this, but... Uh, but this, it really means a lot. So keep it coming. Yeah, and, and keep it, yeah, keep it coming. It, it makes the show more useful for all of us, especially me, which is who I'm most concerned for. <laughs> so I, because I always learn the most uh, uh, when we have these conversations. So uh, I want to learn from, you know, Jeff and, and you know, uh, all, all these guys. And Jim. And, and, and we've and got Jim Wyman and they, David and, and another yeah. one from Jeff coming up next. Week. Yeah, great. so, yeah, it's great. It's great. good. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Remember, feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell us what you want to hear about, and let's uh, solve these problems together. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, folks. Keep living that charm life. See you next week. <laughs>